Welcome to the uh, second lesson for uh, the intermediate class. This is the first part. We're actually going to have a couple different parts uh, for this lesson. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the fundamental principle of counting. Um, and I've got it written up here. It says if something can be chosen or can happen or um, can uh, has been done or just the, there's a lot of different things we're talking about when we're talking about these this first part and if it can happen in m different ways so like for instance if you're if you want to choose a letter that would be 26 different ways and after that has happened something can else can be chosen in n different ways so let's say we're talking about a number this time and there are uh, 10 numbers so there'd be 10 different ways then the number of ways of choosing both of them is m times n so in that example i gave there would be 26 ways of choosing a letter 10 ways of choosing a number so the number of ways of choosing a number in a letter is 26 times 10. This could be extended to multiple things, right? If you did um, choose a number, a letter, a symbol, a picture, a, you know, there it would just be how many of each one there are, and you'd multiply those together. Another, an example of how this is applied is um, given to you. It says, Julie has 12 shirts and nine pairs of pants. How many different outfits can she create? So the reason this is a fundamental principle of counting is there are two things that have got to be chosen that are completely separate from each other. The 12 shirts, the nine pairs of pants. Well, when, you're, when you think about this, if we let the shirts be uh, represented by letters, so like for instance, our first shirt we pick is letter A, or is shirt A, and then the pants by numbers, there's actually diff nine different pairs of pants that we could combine together in this selection with A, right, and go all the way down here. Um, to nine different pairs of pants. And so for each letter, each shirt, there are nine pairs of pants. And so it makes sense if you want to find count the total number of them, you'd count the nine pairs of pants with A, the nine pair of B, nine of C, all the way to um, where until you got to 12 different shirts. And so it, when you add nine together 12 times, that's like multiplying 12 times nine, which equals 108. So there are 108 different outfits that she could uh, select. Now, um, it, this doesn't always just have to apply to two completely different things. Sometimes, let's say um, in this case we we're talking about um, days of the week and Julie had wanted to pick how many different ways could she pick from the 12 shirts um, a shirt to wear on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so this applies to the fundamental theorem because you've got five different choices, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And there we want to think about how many different ways can we do this? Well, the first day on Monday, you got 12 different shirts and there are 12 ways to do it. On Tuesday, we no longer have 12 shirts. The assumption is she doesn't repeat wearing a shirt. So now we've taken away the shirt she wore on Monday and now there are 11 that she can choose for Tuesday. And then 10 for Wednesday and nine for Thursday and eight for Friday. So if you multiplied those five together, that's how many different ways she could take her 12 shirts and wear them on five consecutive days. And that has actually has a specific name, and that name is called a permutation. When we talk about a permutation, we're talking about the total number of arrangements. When you see the word arrangements, hopefully that is um, making you think of order, right? Just like on that shirt example, the order we're talking about were the days of the week. That ordered, as we picked out a shirt, it had a specific order. We didn't just pick out five random shirts. We picked out a shirt for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then also, whenever we talk about a permutation, we're talking about um, where you don't replace it. For instance, you don't think about, okay, I got 12 shirts. I can wear, I could wear the same shirt every day. Once I've worn a shirt, I'm not going to re-wear it that week. Now, there's some you know people who like to re-wear shirts, but we're talking about um, a, a specific kind of math problem, which it says that... Um, when you talk about permutations, what we do is we don't have replacement, is what we're talking about. Um, when you do permutation, we, we, there's a way to, to represent this, and we say we've got in things like our 12 shirts, and we want to pick five of them to range, or R of them to rearrange. And the way that we do that, this formula works, is it's always n factorial, so the total number of things factorial, over n minus R factorial. Well, if you think about the example I just did, that would be 12 factorial over, well, 12 minus 5, you picked 5 shirts for 5 days, 7 factorial. 
Well, hopefully you have a good idea of what factorial is. And, and when you think about factorial, it's 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 1, 2 times 1. And then you have the exact same thing on the bottom. So you can actually cancel out the 7 factorial on the bottom and then inside 12 factorial, 7 factorial. So that leaves you with 12 times 11 times not 10 times 9 times 8. And the way I remember permutation is not necessarily this. It's good to know this, and that comes up at times and helps you out at times. But I like to remember it this way, which is you got 12 things. I want to select five of them when order matters. And so I've got to count down and multiply the, the five numbers less than or 12 and then the four numbers less than that together. Right? There are five numbers here, 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, and then I can stop. I don't need to go through this and do the simplification. I can, I can just do that up front. So on example two, it says a lottery consists of five numbers drawn from a hat containing 25 numbers. If the order the numbers are drawn matters, which means if you don't, if you don't have your lottery numbers in the right order, then, it, then you don't win, how many different winning selections are possible? Well, you've got 25 numbers, so 25P, you want to select five of them. So it's just going to be, you can either do 25 factorial over 20 factorial, or you can do a, a shortcut, which would be to simplify in your head, which would be 25 times 24 times 23 times 22. And we just count down um, five times. And when you multiply that out, you get um, 6,375,600. And so there are that many different winning combinations and that, that in, for this particular problem. That's because order did matter. Okay. Now, there, there are some variations on these types of problems. For instance, I could maybe say how many different um, ways, if, if these numbers were numbered 1 through 25, how many different winning combinations started with 1? Well, if you think about that, your 1 is already selected, so you only are selecting the other four numbers, so it would be 24, the 24 numbers left, permute 4 is how you would do that. Okay, our last example um, dealing with permutation says the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are placed in a hat. How many different four-letter words could be formed if letters are drawn one at a time without replacement? Well, the first thing they recognize is when you talk about words in math, we're just talking about a combination of letters. It doesn't actually have to be a Webster word, meaning a word in the Webster dictionary. So how many different combinations of letters is another way to say that. So in this case, it's going to be, well, I've got seven letters I'm choosing from. I want to permute four of them because order does matter in a word. Whenever you're dealing with a word, order always matters. So that's just going to be start with seven and count down four, four numbers. Seven times six times five times four, which is going to equal 840. So there would be 840 different words that are possible of being created just using those seven letters and doing four at a time, just using four of those letters. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is talking about uh, combinations, which basically says how many different ways can I just pick a group of four letters versus the four letters being in order.